how my mum showed me how to bottle and preserve pears. And this is a great way of preserving pears when they're in season. They will be shelf stable and they will sit quite happily in a dark cool place for literally years and years and years. Um, one of the great reasons why it's a good idea to bottle pears is because then you've got them on hand for all sorts of different things, whether you're doing like uh, a dessert, maybe it's a pear tatatan or maybe a pear frangipan or an upside down pear cake. Uh, but it's also just great having poached pears on hand for just breakfast, like with your muesli or granola. Uh, they're just so versatile and this is a great way to do it and it's super easy, so let's get into it. Okay, so there's a few little things we just need to make sure we've got ready to go before we get stuck into uh, bottling our pears. So first of all, we're going to need some beautiful fresh pears which we've got ready to go and you need to have some jars. Uh, they need to be sterilised and so, so wash them really well, uh, drain them and then to sterilise them you can just place them on a tray in a 100 degree oven for about 5 minutes and that will dry them out and they need to have no moisture left inside them and the heat will just sterilize them beautifully. These I've done earlier in the day, so they're ready to go. The lids, we also need to pop them in a small pot of boiling water just to sterilize those. And if you're just using regular like pickle jars, just with a screw lid, um, we're just gonna use these simple little lids here. If you're using like a traditional preserving jar, they can come in um, several different types. This one's in a G jar, which is quite popular in New Zealand, and so much so they're often handed down through families over generations. They're just a wonderful jars to use. So for these specialized G preserving jars, you're gonna need a like a jar seal, and that is simply like a little seal like that with a little rubber band. That also needs to be sterilized, and a band, which is just gonna pull this down on top once we're ready to go. So we'll get a wee pot of water on for those in a sec. Also gonna need some sugar and some water ready to go. And our ratio is gonna be five parts water to one part sugar. And we're gonna add those together in a, in a pot and we're gonna bring that to the boil and make a simple sugar syrup that we're both gonna cook our pears in, but also we're gonna pour back over our pears when we pack the pears into the jars to take out any air pockets. And that is actually the key to why our pears are gonna last so long. These are about a litre. We're allowing about five to six medium pears per jar. So we'll start our sugar syrup, get that on the go. We're gonna peel our first six pears, cut them into quarters, poach them, pack them into the jars. So we're getting into a bit of a production line and it doesn't matter if you're doing two jars or doing this for like half a day. The Essentially, the process is the same and you're gonna get gorgeous pears that look amazing and they're gonna taste fantastic as well. So I've got a small pot here with uh, just a quarter full with some water and I'll just pop that on. And in a larger pot, it's not, it's not too large, um, just nice, a nice size to work with. I've got two and a half liters of water. And to that, I'm gonna add two cups, this is a half cup, two cups of sugar. So it's got a bit of sweetness to it, but it's not too much. Three, four. So this is quite a nice amount of sugar syrup to work with. It's more than I need for poaching two bottles of pears, but it's a, it's a nice amount of volume to poach those pears nice and efficiently. And if I want to keep bottling, I've got plenty there to work with. So literally to sterilize these lids, I'm just gonna pop these lids in just like that. And they literally just need to come to the boil. And then I can just turn that water off and they can sit there nice and easy like that. Our sugar syrup's coming up and now we can get into the fun part of our pears. So I'm just using, uh, this might be a little bit unusual, this is just what I call a wee speed peeler. So these are, there's a couple of different designs of them and I just find them nice and easy. Just This is what I just use at the restaurant and I just find them easier, but it doesn't matter what kind of a peeler, usually it's a potato peeler, but it works really well for this. You wanna get nice and high, and make sure all the skin is off, otherwise you lose points. That's one of the things my mum would say to me, that if you leave any skin on the pears, you'll see them in the jars, and that's not a good thing. You wanna have lovely white pears poking out at you. And if you leave little brown bits, you lose points. So you can just take that off like that. 
Okay, this is up. So I'm going to flick that off. You want to get them when they're really in season, when they're full of flavour, and they'll be cheaper too. And then you can just enjoy them year round, whenever you want, for whatever reason you want. Right, so we've got six there. The sugar syrup's coming up. Okay, now I'm going to just cut straight down through the middle. Right through there. Just with a nice sharp knife. It's actually just a nice family tradition as well. Like this is something I grew up with. And it's something that I want to pass on to my kids as well. That's partly why we're doing this video today is because, you know, it is something that's really cool. I'll just take this little nick out. That I think today is, is still really relevant. Like it's a wonderful way of preserving pears. And we're just going to come through here and take a little slice. And out she goes. And that's just the core. So there's no, there's no pips in there. And it's just a lovely shaped cheek. If there's any brown bits that I've missed, I'll just make sure I take them out at the same time. One of the reasons why we do just do six pears at a time is it's just a nice amount to work with. You get yourself in a bit of a rhythm. It's not a crazy fast job, but it's worth taking your time to get it right. And now I'm just going to make sure I don't lose points. Make sure that little bit of brown flesh is not there, otherwise my mum will kill me. Back in the day they took their preserving fruits and jam pretty seriously, so I better keep up the tradition. And that's just about to come to a simmer, so in she goes. And by just doing this amount of pears, there's, there's quite a bit of volume of sugar syrup versus pears, so they're going to just cook nice and efficiently. It's not going to cool that sugar syrup right down, it's just going to keep rolling nicely. I can get my next six pears ready to roll, put my lids there. Okay, so those pears will just take uh, three or four minutes. I'm actually just going to push this across to a higher heat just to speed this up because it wasn't quite at a simmer. And we just, we basically just want to cook them to the nice and knife tender. And um, then we can start packing them in our jars. So I'll just let this catch up because um, I've been talking faster than I've been um, cooking my sugar syrup. And uh, once they're done, we'll, we'll get the next pears on the go and we'll show you how to pack the jars. Okay, so that's just come up to the simmer now. And that's what you want. You want the fruit to be just simmering away nicely. You don't want to be boiling like crazy. And you just want that nice little balance. Now, as soon as that fruit comes to the simmer, uh, that will take, as I said, uh, two to three minutes. And it just depends on how ripe those pears were. If they're super ripe, it might be a little bit quicker. If your pears are quite hard, just cook them a little, a little bit longer. We're still looking for that nice knife tender fruit before it goes into the jar. So that's just come to the simmer there. And so we're going to get busy and get the next ones ready to go. And this is the rhythm that we're going to get into one jar at a time. And we can literally do this all morning or all day if need be. And you'll be surprised how much fruit you can get ready. And if you are bottling lots and lots of pears, and your sugar syrup like you're using it up you simply just add more back into the pot you just keep that going so you can just top that up with more water and more sugar as, as need be because all you have to do is bring it um, back to the boil but it's going to give them a little check yep they're actually not too far away so here we go round two and literally they'll be cooked by the time I get these ready. Just a nice little angle, making sure you're getting that core out. Right, now we're just making sure we've got that little bits of brown skin away. Because essentially as soon as we get that jar, sorry, that pot empty of pears, I want to have these next pears <coughs> ready to go straight away in. I don't want to be doing any of this because that's going to slow the whole process down. And I'm going to get my pears in here so I can just dump them in. All right, we're in business. I'm just going to bring this across. They look really good and just bring that out. That's just lovely. It's got a nice little, nice little give to it. And I can tell that that pears ready to go. So here's my jar. So here are my lids. I just need like a little little plate. 
because I'm going to put some uh, syrup on top and this is actually called, this way of preserving pears is called the overflow method. So we're actually going to overflow the jar with some of the cooking liquid because we really want it to have no air bubbles left at all. So you need something, the jar sitting on something that's going to catch the juice <coughs> and then we can tip that excess uh, sugar syrup back into our pot. Right, so we're just working away here, I've turned this off just for a moment and your first pears you want to have just on the base of your jar you're literally using your spoon to position them you don't want them to just go in flat we're going to arrange them around the bottom of the jar according to their shape and so we're not going haphazardly we're actually packing them in so it's actually an attractive design but also in a way that you can see the fruit lovely and clearly but also the fruit is going to be nicely packed in so it takes a little bit of getting your head around how to get this fruit in that is that is looking quite nice so we're not just jamming them in and squashing them in so here's my last little cheek or quarter Now I'm going to get my syrup and just pour that in like that there. And then I'm actually just going to turn this back on. And then she goes. See all the air bubbles coming out of it. At that five to one ratio, this is lovely and light. Okay, so we've, it looks like we've, we've filled it up, but actually there will be some air pockets in there. So you just want to take your knife and just a nice thin knife and just put it down the side. If you can see any air bubbles, get your knife in there and just move the pears around a little bit. There's a little one there, just a couple there. And just move those pears a little bit. There's another one there. And really let that, any air, come up you're not trying to cut the fruit or squash the fruit <clears throat> and then just a final amount of syrup on top and the pears are sticking out a little bit over top that's okay because when we put this on this is the overflow part of the method just push that on we're going to screw that up and I'm just going to use this cloth because the bottom is going to be quite hot because obviously this liquid is boiling. Just give that a nice little tighten. And when you, when you poach fruit like this and you put it in a preserving jar, the heat actually sucks the lid down on itself and creates a seal. And already I can see a little bow in it and that's ready to go. And I can just give this like a little rinse. We can just pat it dry, and there we go. That's our first jar ready to go. Now our sugar syrup's back on the go, and go our pears, and we simply repeat the process again. Okay, so our pears have come back to a simmer, and there'll be three or four more minutes before they're ready to go into the jar. But you can see what I'm talking about, um, how you can get into a bit of a rhythm. And it doesn't matter if you're just making uh, two jars or 20 jars, it's not a hard process. And the great thing is, as soon as you crack that seal, you're in business, you can use the fruit straight away. It's just one of those processes that's just super satisfying. And it's even more special when it's like a family tradition that you can carry on and, and then pass on to, to friends and family. Okay, these are coming up. nice and ready okay so jar number two right to the bottom I'm putting the rounded side down and don't be afraid if you get it in the wrong spot just to have a bit of a, a fiddle around you wonder how you're going to get them all in but once you get your eye in it's quite satisfying here they go she goes here still got a whole pier I'm right near the top I've still got a whole pier to get in there See how that goes. Two more bits. Just gonna squeeze them in there. Okay, last bit. Heaps of room. That looks great. Okay, here we go. 
strewn on the top. Doesn't matter if you spill a bit. It's funny, when I was a kid, this was such a chore and we almost did anything we could to get out of it. And now, I've got kids of my own. I actually quite like it. Let's get those air bubbles out. Really try careful not to spear your fruit so that it cuts up. Not too much air in there that time. Last little bit. And so this time around we're not using a fancy preserving lid. This is literally just the lid from the pickle pickle jar. Don't worry that that's not dry. Uh, being in the water, it's still sterile and we've obviously got liquid that's overflowing from this. So it's not like when you're making jam and you need a nice dry lid. So you can see the liquid's just pushed out there. Grab this again. And if you're doing a big batch like this, you probably would have a tray with a tea towel that you could just sit them in and let them cool down before you give them a wee wash. So that's looking really good. I'm really happy with that. And even though you're just using a simple pickle jar lid, that will actually suck down as well, which means you've got a nice good seal and they will hold equally well as long as the, the lids are not damaged when you've taken them off the jar from what they've been used for previously. So there you have it, poached pears. Fantastic, year round, and probably the easiest way to preserve a fruit that I know, and just a family favorite. So give it a try. If you've liked what you've seen today, um, if you've got any comments, uh, chuck them in below, and or, or reach out to us, or check out our other videos, and we've got plenty more uh, cool stuff like this coming your way. So um, check it out, and we'll see you soon.